Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss fringe benefits as they relate to S corporation and specifically S corporation shareholders. The first thing we want to learn about is what are fringe benefits. Well, when you work for a company, you might be paid most likely on a weekly or bi-weekly or bi-monthly basis a certain salary, which is fine. That's how you are compensated. However, the company might offer other benefits to you other than cash. Those we call the, those generally speaking fringe benefits. What, what are some examples? For example, gym membership, commuter benefits. For example, where I used to work in downtown Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, the CPA firm would give me access to the parking lot that's adjacent to the office. And the, the value of that parking lot on a monthly basis used to be around $300 per month. So this was a benefit given to me, not part of my salary, but I will be able to park there every day so I can make it to work on time. I don't have to worry about finding a parking spot. Workers' compensation, paid medical leave, educational assistance. For example, you might work for a company and they want to give you money to finish your degree or learn some co learn some new skill, take, take a new course. Well, guess what? They're going to give you that benefit. It's called fringe benefit. Maybe they're going to give you accidental insurance premium, so on and so forth. The list is exhaustive, but this is a list of it. So why do we have to learn about fringe benefits when it comes to S corporation? Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Here's why. Shareholders and S corporations may be employed by their corporation. Matter of fact, shareholder employee, real employee is a common for a shareholder. What does that mean? It means most, most S corporation are owned and the people that own them work at the corporation as well. For example, I'll tell you about my company, Farhat Lectures. I am a shareholder employee. I own the company, but also I'm an employee of the company. And that's very, very common for S corporation. The owners are also employees. So what does that mean? It means when it comes to those benefits, there's a certain tax treatment we need to be aware of. So the tax treatment of the fringe benefit received by the shareholder employees depend on the percentage of their ownership interest in the corporate stock. And from the IRS perspective, they look at two types of ownership ownership with less than two percent interest and ownership two percent or more interest simply put if you own less than two percent you are considered basically a minor owner it's it's basically not a big deal but if you own two percent or more of the stock then you are considered basically in quote a major and the rules apply to you so how do we define two percent a two percent shareholder is a shareholder who owns directly or by attribution indirectly on any day of the taxable year more than 2% of the outstanding common stock or has more than 2% of the combined voting power of the corporate stock. Now, let's start with the shareholders that owns less than 2% interest, which is basically minor shareholders. Well, the fringe benefits paid on behalf of those shareholders, they are deductible as ordinary business expense and not taxable to the employees. So simply put, because they are not owners of the company what's the risk here let's let's talk about the risk it's very important to understand this what will be the risk let me just show you what will be the risk the risk would be for example i will buy my my membership if i'm a shareholder employee of an s corporation i would let the corporation buy my gym membership and what i do i deduct my gym membership on my s corporation expenses and i use it i use it for my personal use okay or personal use vehicle i will buy a company I will buy a vehicle as part of my S corporation asset, then I use this vehicle for personal use. Well, do you guys see what the problem is? If you own the company and using their asset, what's happening is you are using it for personal use and having the deduction for business purpose. So that's what they're trying to avoid. Simply put, for someone who's less than 2% owner, that's fine. 
if you give them those benefits, those benefits are deductible by the business and not taxable to the employee. The important part is not taxable to the employee. So you're not going to give them the benefit and tell them at the end of the year, you are responsible for paying taxes. For employees with more than 2% ownership, most fringe benefit received by those employees. Now let's talk about employees with more than 2% ownership interest. Well, most fringe benefits received by employees with more than 2% ownership interest are still deductible by the corporation in, a, in arriving to net business income. Well, those, those are business expenses. However, notice they are deductible and taxable to the recipient employee. So let me give you a simple example. Let's assume I purchase my gym membership or Farhat Lectures, the S Corporation, purchase my gym membership. So when I look at my income statement or 1120S, I will deduct my gym membership, okay, gym membership, you know, $300, yearly gym membership, or whatever the amount is. So I will deduct my gym membership, that's fine, as fringe benefit. However, when I get my W-2, that 300 will appear on my W-2, it will be reported to me as income that this, this membership. So otherwise, if I can only deduct it and not report it, that will be great. But since I am an owner, more than 2% owner, well, you're going to, if you want to get the benefit, well, you are also responsible for paying taxes. But if you are just an employee of the company, that gym membership, if they gave it to you as a fringe benefit, it's tax free. Now, again, some examples, group life insurance. Now, bear in mind, accident and health insurance premium, what they do, they add them to your wages. They're part of your wages, but they're not subject to FICA, which is Social Security and FUTA, Federal Unemployment Tax. So simply put, they add them, they add them to your wages. Now also, again, those accident and health insurance, they're, they're also, they, they are part of your, of your income, but they're also deductible. So basically it's a wash. Okay, adoption assistance, educational assistance, meal and lo meals and lodging. There's an exception if you have if you have an exception applies to the contribution made by an S corporation to a qualified pension or profit sharing plan. So if the S corporation created a retirement, some sort of a qualified pension or profit sharing plan, guess what? Here, you're gonna get the benefit. They are deductible, of course, by the corporation, but this expense, this qualified pension and profit sharing, the, the contribution, which are an expense to the S corporation, are not taxable to the shareholder to the 2% shareholders. So if I created a qualified pension plan and I contributed some money within a limit, there's a limit for that, I can deduct it on my S corporation and that amount is not, not taxable to me. So this is a good benefit. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional multiple choice, true false exercises that's gonna help you to deal with S corporation questions. Whether you are a CPA candidate, enrolled agent, or in counting students. Good luck. Study hard, stay safe.